Chuck has a question. Hi, I've been switching new computers over to Microsoft 365 accounts instead of setting up a local admin account on the machine. What is the best way to set up a handful of computers without using my login credentials? I know uh, in a domain environment, I would have a domain admin account I could use, but would this work the same if I set up an unlicensed admin user just to set up the computer? I don't necessarily know who will be using the computer right away, but want to get a jump start on setup so I can hand the device over and they can just log in. Um, I'm confused what they mean by unlicensed user because they, they in the setup of a of a of a machine, there's no license involved. Um, you know, Active Azure Active Directory isn't limited. Um, you're limited by a number of objects to what? I think it's like nine hundred thousand now or something like that. I don't know. Um, but you know, it, 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 that that should not be an issue. Um, if he wants, if he wants to go ahead and he wants to set these things up clean. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry. It, it, the name on this was Chris. Maybe it's a she. I don't know. Chuck. Oh, Chuck. Oh, Chuck. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's probably <laughs> definitely a guy. It could be. Yeah. Could be. Could be a girl. I don't. Yeah. Know. Um, uh, but uh, if if they want to set it up so it looks like nobody's even touched the thing and they treat it like shrink wrapped, you know, where basically you just ship them a machine, um, they can do Azure Azure Active Directory domain join, right? So you set up a domain in Azure Azure Active Directory, and then anybody who opens up a machine can join that domain without any admin ever logging into it. Now, if they want to pre-configure the machine and then ship it to the user and not have that admin on there, there's something called autopilot. So you use autopilot to pre-configure the machine. There has to be a, an administrator. I say this for two reasons. Number one, there has to be an administrative user because you don't want a machine. Um, I apologize for the dog. You don't want a machine, um, you know, not having an admin user. Okay, uh, you have to have a back door. All right, um, and especially if you're managing these machines, if you're going to manage them through Intune, Intune requires it. All right, there's there's no doubt about it. You have to have it. So, but what AutoTune can do is Auto uh, Autopilot can do is Autopilot can actually hide that other user, so the you the regular user won't see it. Right, it won't show up as an extra icon. It won't show up as an extra login, anything like that. It, the user will just be able to once they get the machine, they turn it on. It's pre-configured by uh, the IT folks with all the apps and everything else, and they basically they get what they call is familiar known as an out-of-box experience, an, an OOBE experience, and it goes through the whole you know little setups and things like that, like you know setting up your language and your keyboard and your things like that, you know. Um, and then they just it prompt comes up and asks you to log into Azure AD and to your Microsoft account. Um, and the user doesn't know anything about a pre-configuration except when they finally get to the desktop and they see, oh, there's my you know work app, there's my other work app, there's all the, all this stuff is pre-configured and pre-installed. I'm doing this exact process at the moment where the end user had to do all that pre build that autopilot process themselves. It's not the, you know, it's literally from that out of the box. And I created a guide, quite a long sort of extensive guide of what it goes through and the tick, 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 you know, of building the device. And they're a little overwhelmed with it because they feel like they're building a laptop and they have this guide that was sort of seven pages long, just with screenshots showing them what it looked like. And, um, you know, some of the pushback that's going on. It's like, no. And then there's, if it takes just that little bit too long, there's this failure that was sort of happening. So what was supposed to take a really short period of time, you know, 15, max 20 minutes, could be taken two hours because they were having to restart. And then it was taking them three and four and sometimes all day because it was having these fails. So therefore it looked like the end user was having a dreadful experience. It was just that one little component take too long. So then it classed as a fail. So, so from the end user perspective, they didn't know what they were doing, freaking out. So it's like, right, no, the organization needs to do that pre-build, exactly what you were talking, Mike, with the that is it back end and, and building. And then all they had to do was the end experience where they all they do is walk up, type in their email. Um, and it then just go through and put in your pin, your facial recognition straight in. It does the initial, you know, like you would at home, the high we're getting your device, you know, your device ready for a window, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was a really simple process. And we saw such a shift from the behavior from one to the other of the panic 
from an end user perspective. So it comes down to, well, who are you trying to do it with as well? You know, because you could really overwhelm the user. And we've got, I had to can all of that last minute, literally two weeks prior to rollout where everything was all sorted and all the guides to redo all the guides, still finalizing the guide right at this moment. And we go live in a week's time. So we Desperately, and we've got to get them printed. And but we had to, we had to change it because it was just too overwhelming for an end user. So, you know, take them into take whoever you're working with into um, into account yeah. when you go to do this process. I, I think that the, I mean the question here for for Chuck is, I mean, my my assumption that this is a small organization, so they're not to the point where they're creating like a, a you know a series of pre-built laptops that are ready to go out to it's a, like a regular onboarding process this is a you know smaller organization but there's got to be a better way to do that even if it's like five machines for five people versus hey i do five a week this is mm. part of my job to do this yeah. um yeah and i would say that i mean if some folks don't want to go the autopilot route because the autopilot is it, it, it's it to me there was a simpler solution uh, back in the day which wasn't that long ago something called the mdt which was a microsoft deployment toolkit um, and that actually you could do that locally or you could have a user's computer halfway across the world connect to an mdt server on the internet and then download the entire hard drive image to that yeah. computer and the mdt allows for that so Good example is a user, you know, uh, the hard drive dies or, you know, something happens uh, where their hard drive gets corrupt and it won't boot. MDT, if you can get them back up with a actual bootable USB or a live C uh, DVD, CD, DVD, um, MDT, then they can connect to that server and then basically it just streams the entire image across the Internet. It takes a little, it takes a while, yeah. <laughs> obviously, but. It's a full repair process. I mean, it's a it's a full self service type of, of process that can be done through that. Um, Autopilot is actually much more advanced in terms of works with Azure and things like that. But MDT is uh, Autopilot was actually kind of outlined around MDT. So, so MDT is not available anymore then. Oh, so there's no there well, there, or there it is. Yeah, yeah, MDT is still available. It's part of the uh, the ADK, uh, the uh, development kit for Windows 10 and Windows 11. So MDT is still available.